Hello and welcome to the episode 97 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we'll talk about the precautionary defection, the birth of the Magical Mystery Tour, and the fine tune-in for a single release. On the 7th of April 1961, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, were busy with another performance of their residency at the Top 10 Club in Hamburg, West Germany. One year later, in 1962, the Beatles, still with Pete Best on drums but without George Harrison, performed twice during the evening, once at the Casbah Coffee Club and once at the Cavern Club, both in Liverpool. The Cavern gig saw the Beatles supported by the Saints Jazz Band. George was feeling under the weather and band manager Brian Epstein concerned about his health and the band's imminent departure for their third residence in Hamburg didn't allow him to perform. In 1963, the Beatles played an engagement at the Savoy Ballroom in Portsmouth. Only seven days before, they had performed at the City's Guild Hall for the Montez Row package tour. On this date in 1964, the Beatles kept working on their A Hard Day's Night film, at the Twickenham Film Studios. The task of the day was completing the filming of the interiors of the police station sequence. Do you like the work I've been doing with this podcast? Send me a comment to let me know, and if you want to help me to focus on increasing the output and the quality of similar content, consider visiting www.simonmas.com support to find out what you can do. Be fab! and make the difference. Thank you! Another day of filming on the 7th of April 1965, still at the Twickenham Film Studios. This time, though, the Beatles were busy with their second feature film, Eight Arms to Hold You, as help was still called. Today, the work focused on the pub cellar sequence, in which Ringo Starr comes face to face with Raja, the famous Bengal man-eater tiger. Moving on to 1966, the Beatles had a second recording session for the Revolver album at the Abbey Road EMI Studios in London. During the afternoon session, between 2.30 and 7.15 pm, the band started working on the Tomorrow Never Knows basic track, recorded the day before. The main bulk of the work was dedicated to superimposing various tape loop overdubs on the song. Each Beatle brought at least one tape loop of sound effects realized at home. Five of the tapes were played on different tape machines with the studio staff using pencils to keep the tapes well stretched and engineer Jeff Emerick creating a live mix of the sounds, recording the result on track three of the four-track tape of the song. According to producer George Martin, quoted on Beatlesbible.com, it is the one track of all the songs the Beatles did that could never be reproduced. It would be impossible to go back now and mix exactly the same thing. The happening of the tape loops, inserted as we all swung off the levers of the faders willy-nilly, was a random event. After a hour-long break, everyone reconvened to the studio and between 8.15 pm and 1.30 am, the Beatles recorded the first five takes of Got To Get You Into My Life. Despite take five was enriched with overdubs before the end of the session, including a proper version of the vocals by Paul McCartney, this version of the song was abandoned the following day. It lay dormant until it was released in 1996 in the Anthology 2 album. On the 7th of April 1967, George Martin and his production team, without any Beatle present, prepared the stereo mixes of several Sgt. Pepper's songs. Working from 7 pm to 1 am, they completed with a little help from my friends, being for the benefit of Mr. Kite, fixing a hole and losing the sky with diamonds. The Beatles' presence in Abbey Road had become the rigueur for the mono mixing sessions, but the band was still happy to leave the stereo mixes in the hands of George Martin. Meanwhile, in the United States, Paul McCartney spent more time with his girlfriend, Jane Asher. Using an 8mm film camera, Paul filmed Jane walking among the trees in the afternoon. 
It was probably then that McCartney had an idea that eventually turned into a magical mystery tour. Paul thought that if the Beatles hired the film crew, they could direct the film themselves. How about creating something out of a happening like traveling around with an interesting group of people on a bus? In many years from now, Barry Miles' biography of McCartney, Paul remembers. It used to just be called a mystery tour up north. When we were kids, you'd get on a bus and you didn't know where you were going, but nearly always it was Blackpool. From Liverpool, it was inevitably Blackpool, and everyone would go, oh, it was Blackpool after all. Everyone would spend time guessing where they were going, and this was part of the thrill. And we remembered those. Two years later, in 1969, Paul McCartney insisted to book a 4 to 8 p.m. session with Glyn Jones at the Olympic Sound Studios in London. Paul intended to decide which mix of Get Back was best for the single, and eventually remixed the song a bit to get a better result. The matter was settled by playing acetates of the different options on a cheap record player, owned by Jerry Boyce tape operator of the session. This ensured that even the lowest quality equipment could give a decent playback of the work. The day produced the final mono and stereo mixes of the song, scheduled to be released as a single on the 11th of April. This concludes today's episode of What A Fab Day. Tune in again tomorrow for more stories from the life of the band you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.